Duke Nukem Forever. This is on Xbox One X. It is not enhanced. And yeah, we're jumping into this very interesting and strange title that is a weird mixture of various gaming eras thrown together in a kind of patchwork fashion, as to say. So I played this originally when it came out, and then I did a full playthrough of it on backwards compatibility um, like a year or so ago. And I've, I've always wanted to do something just to kind of go over this game, because it is really quite fascinating. So it's not a great game, but it's something I had a lot of fun with. Uh, it's got some really just stupid humor to it, some really, you know, strange sort of ways of going about things that I'm not sure you could actually even really get away with today. It's definitely, I think, supposed to be a bit of a satire, or it's just really how Duke Nukem the character is. I'd, I'd really actually like to see another effort with this character to see what they would do with it in the modern era as this really wasn't a game of even that time. So this is a shooter title, you know, it's got Duke Nukem, and you're just going around, uh, you know, chewing bubblegum, kicking ass, doing uh, Duke Nukem type things, and it's it's very weird. So I, I love the interactivity of the game. I thought that was very interesting for the time. Now, this is a game that has like so many little problems and issues with it, but I just really wanted to push that out at the forefront, that at the time they really didn't have games that were doing stuff like this. You could interact with things, you know, use the water fountains, you could write on stuff. Now, they're kind of like weird spots that maybe feel out of place to a degree, but you could actually interact with a lot of things, and I thought that was really interesting in terms of the technology behind that. Now, the game does have a lot of, uh, I guess you could say, uh, hiccups, performance issues, and everything like that. It's better through the enhancement, obviously, than it was back in the day, but there's still uh, a number of like bugs and stuff that's present. And that's because this is something that was patchworked together throughout a wide range of years. They really, it's amazing that this actually even released after as long as, as it did. Because there were so many, I guess you could say, iterations, and you can really see that within the game. The levels, the, the weird design, some of the mechanics, the mini games. It's, it's strange, and it's also a game that suffers a lot in regards to not being able to provide this in a sort of seamless way. Even comparing it to other games at the time, I don't think this is a particularly charming or great looking game, it, it just really isn't. I do like the sense of scale, you actually feel like you're in a city throughout the adventure, but at the same time, it's, it's just... It's really not that great of an experience to comparisons of games of its time of when it was released. And it's just bizarre because you have to like wait to load into areas, and it just feels, again, like a part of a little bit of a patchwork thing. The levels are so inconsistent. You do do a lot of weird things. There's this weird obsession with like the mini Duke Nukem. And I didn't really think that those parts were all that great. The, the platforming elements of this were just absolutely awful. And I don't even think the shooting parts were that great because it just kind of some of the AI's a bit, as you could say, awkward or weird. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it's really not fantastic, but I also think it's kind of just like a stupid fun game. You know, it's not too long to work through. It does have a good selection of like chapters to it, but they're not very long chapters. There's not a whole lot going on with them. There is also, I guess, you could say a multiplayer component, but you're never going to be able to find anybody to play it with. So it's a complete ghost town, but still it's a neat aspect that that is included. It might be fun to play, I don't even know how I would be able to even set up an experience to be able to check out what that's like today. I know I played it back when it released for a little bit, and I thought that was maybe neat back then, but again, that was a very long time ago, even at this point. So I can't really say much for the multiplayer, and apologies for that, but that's just what it's like if you don't make a multiplayer that has options to keep, you know, community playing even if players aren't present, and that, you know, in the sense of bots. Anyways, moving past that, uh, the narrative kind of just goes along, you go from place to place, blasting enemies, shooting things, blowing things up, uh, saying all these weird uh, kind of lines just being generally Duke Nukem, and if you don't know who Duke Nukem is, he's just some sort of crazy over-the-top, I guess you could say roided-out guy. They make a joke about that at the beginning. 
but yeah, it's just the the humor and stuff of it. It's very of different times. It, it's so strange. I, I guess it's uh, at times inappropriate, uh, times a bit crazy. It it really does. I guess you could say push the envelope a bit in regards to what the character says, how how the character acts, what happens in the game. It is quite, I guess you could say, gory to a degree. Yeah, that's definitely true too. And it's just got such weird moments and set pieces. It's hard to really just talk about this one because it is so odd. Again, going back to that mismatch style where every level kind of feels a little bit weird and different. I liked what they, again, were doing with the interactivity, but you know, sometimes it's just kind of a very weird game to play with some parts of it that are very, very awkwardly put together. And I, I think that kind of, I don't know, really hinders the experience of this one. Because, you, you know, not for like people like myself, I didn't really wait the time it took for this to come out. But if you wait that long and then you end up with this game, you'd kind of be like, oh, wow, yeah, that, that burns. It was probably a, a big, you know, burnout moment for a lot of people that have waited so long to actually see it come out. You're like, oh yeah, finally, and then you get it, and you're like, uh. But I think maybe this one wouldn't have been necessarily given as much of a heat behind it at the time if it hadn't have had such a long development cycle, and it would have just been an, an average last Duke Nukem title instead of being a, a disappointed, long-awaited final Duke Nukem game. And that's why I'm saying it'd be really cool to see them bring the character back, but I'm not even sure you could get away with some of the, the, the commentary and the attitude uh, in this day and age. I, I think that's just what the times are kind of like now. Because, you know, again, you know, some inappropriate content and that, and that's just what this was. This is something of so many different time periods <laughs> thrown together. I'm not sure there's really other games that have spanned that many eras in regards to being something that's like uh, developed over a long period of time and released. Uh, I think that's interesting. Uh, I'm trying to think of other similar situations where that's happened, but I don't think that's been the case. So anyways, it's, it's an interesting game. I, I think it might actually be worth playing just to kind of see what it's like if you've heard things about it over the years and I've always wondered for yourself. It's nothing too special. I think it's a little below average in regards to the other shooter titles of its time. A lot of the gameplay mechanics have aged poorly, and I, I think I'm even more negative about it now than I was when I replayed it not too long ago. I remember finishing it being like, that was, that was fun. And then you're kind of being like, it wasn't, again, a, a great game. It wasn't a, an amazing experience. But I was like, yeah, it's just like a fun, dumb sort of shooter that I can go through, enjoy the weird quips and the weird quirks, and just kind of be like, oh, wow, he said that. And then, you know, kind of move on from it. Uh, it's definitely different, you know? It's, it's very, very linear focused with so many stilted kind of moments, you know, aside from like little pickups and problems and the weird disjointed loading between things. But it's just like, uh, for example, I, I cut this part out here, but it was just like a very, very slow crane coming. There's times where you gotta like wait for the AI to do something and it's, it's very, very slow. And when you take out even those moments, you kind of realize there's not really a whole lot to this game. And it's kind of like, well, the story is all this really has left, and even that is kind of like, eh. But, I mean, that's, that's Duke Nukem, right? Over-the-top, crazy stuff, weird aliens, weird characters, very strange moments, uh, bizarre levels. I will give it to him that they do try to do different things all the time, but I think that does more harm than good because those platforming segments are just uh, absolutely awful. And it just it seems behind for the technology of its time, and even more behind, you know, today, seeing the set pieces come together in ways that are really not too wild or too, you know, engaging. Uh, it's definitely an interesting title, and I think it was kind of fun to dive into just to even put this together because it's an interesting game. The history of it's fascinating. 
the response to it's fascinating, and I think it's an interesting historic piece in regards to gaming. And I don't think it'll be forgotten because of that. And if it does, that's a shame because it's weird to see a game, you know, make it through so many years of development, come out and be like this. I, I think it's an interesting historical point.